Japan, a land of four seasons and bountiful nature. Washoku cuisine uses seasonal ingredients nurtured by the nation's unique climate. It has been recognized as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. The roots of this cuisine can be found in Japan's villages, hidden in the countryside far from the city. <laughs> there, local people work to preserve and nurture Japan's traditional food culture, which connects them with their history and climate. So, let's set out on a journey to discover the traditional flavors of Japan's hidden villages. Four hundred kilometers north of Tokyo is the city of Tsuruoka in Yamagata Prefecture. It's one of Japan's main farming regions. Chris Broad from England has come to visit Tsuruoka. He has lived in Japan for five years and is a popular YouTuber. During the Edo period, Tsuruoka was a thriving castle town and many buildings from that time remain. This building has caught his attention. Oh, Whoa. I have no idea what half of this stuff is. This historic pickle shop was founded 110 years ago. Tsukemono pickles are an essential accompaniment to traditional Japanese food. In fact, the word tsukemono covers a huge range of different pickles. Even among eggplant kimono, there are various flavors and pickling ingredients. These were pickled for a short period in brine. Mm. Very nice. My image of uh, pickled food is usually very hard food, but this is kind of soft. This is the shop's most popular pickle. Oh my God, <laughs> it's quite spicy. Mm. Spicy karai now. Yeah, but who am I? Oh, <laughs> I'm on fire. In fact, this eggplant has been pickled with mustard. It has a rich taste and excellent texture. Indigenous crops are local vegetables that have been preserved and passed down through generations of farmers. Today, around 50 varieties of indigenous crops and vegetables are grown in Tsuruoka City. This is one of the farms where indigenous crops are grown. <laughs> now it is mid-July and the first Dadacha Mame soybeans are ripe. That's a lot of Dadacha Mame. Sato and his family have grown an indigenous variety of Dadacha Mame in Suruoka for generations. Dadachamame are a local improved variety of soybean. They are famous across Japan for their fragrance and exceptional umami flavor. Oh wow, 
<笑>これをねこう日にかざすと気が茶色ですはいああいや The hairs on normal soybeans are white but on Dadacha Mame they are brown Sato's mother has boiled some Dadacha Mame to eat Mm. When I go to Izakaya, I eat edamame like every week. The difference here is it's kind of juicier. The secret of these delicious beans is in the seeds. Normally, farmers buy their seeds from a supplier, but Tsuruoka's farmers have collected seeds themselves and saved the best. Five varieties with different flavors and harvest times have been passed down until today. Packed into these datachamame, are a determination to grow quality ingredients and long years of effort by local farmers. So the best seeds are passed on to the next generation. It's kind of more than just seeds, it's, a, it's heritage. This is Masayuki Okuda, a chef who cooks Italian food in Suruoka. His uncomplicated and popular dishes bring out all the flavor of indigenous crops. At the 2015 Milan Expo, he helped promote Tsuruoka's food culture and prepared food using dadacha mame. Now he's cooking dadacha mame risotto, which was a big hit at the expo. The recipe uses lots of dadacha mame, freshly picked that morning, and lots of dried dadacha mame with plenty of bite. A little prosciutto on top, and it's done. Local ingredients that have been carefully nurtured over the years, the culinary possibilities are endless. Each region in Japan has its own traditional food culture, and there are many attractive landscapes that nurtured this culture. These regions are accredited through a Japanese Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries project called Savor Japan. One such region is located almost in the center of Japan, the Maze area of Gero City in Gifu Prefecture. It is a village forest that spreads 28 kilometers from north to south, with the Maze River running through it. There are no traffic lights or convenience stores here. The Maze River is one of the purest in Japan and was selected as one of the 100 finest rivers and springs in the nation. Keen anglers from all over Japan visit each summer. They are drawn by the ayu, a sweet fish, said to live in only the most beautiful rivers. In fact, the ayu from this river were chosen in a competition as the most delicious in Japan. Ayu are caught using live decoys. A live ayu is attached to a hook and released in the river, then other ayu that come to attack it are caught on another hook. This is a 
ぜのアユがいかに味がいいかというのはアユの餌というのは岩につくこれを食べる水がきれいな分だけここにきれいなものが生える。The region has a special method of preserving this river that produces excellent algae and ayu. It looks after the forest that flanks the river. Eiji Koike is involved in efforts to maintain the forest. 森林の土壌で、えー、ろ過されたきれいな水が加え流れて品質のいいアユができるということですからやっぱり根本的にはあの森を守るというのが非常に大事だと思います、ね。Local people and the authorities work together to maintain the forest through thinning the trees and cutting back undergrowth. The forest provides natural water. Full of nutrients that flows into the river. The shade from the trees prevents the water from getting too warm. The plentiful water of the Mase River also produces delicious crops. And the best known of these is the popular Mase Hikari brand of rice. Another Maze local specialty served at this time of year uses magnolia leaves. Its name is Hoba Sushi. Vinegared rice containing trout, mountain vegetables, and other ingredients are wrapped in a raw magnolia leaf. Magnolia leaves prevent food from rotting in warm temperature, and its smell also adds flavor to the food. Maze, a region of clean, flowing river waters, uncomplicated food, and happy smiles. The next destination on Chris's journey through Tsuruoka's culinary and scenic wonders is Mount Haguro. There is a special meal that is served only in these mountains. But those who wish to experience that cuisine must first undergo a grueling challenge. It is said that those who visit the three mountains of Haguro, Gasan, and Yudono. Are reborn and can live a new life. Chris's guide is Yoshiyuki Sato, a mountain monk known as a Yamabushi. A wooden staff is essential for walking in the mountains. Yamabushi. Undergo grueling aesthetic practices at the holy mountains as a part of Shugendo, a form of mountain aestheticism. Their robes are highly distinctive. And this? This is a guy. This is a guy. The horagai is used to greet the gods when entering and leaving the mountains to receive their blessings for a safe journey and to express gratitude. And a、uh, small hat. This is Tokin, which is called Kaonomizo. It's called Kaonomizo. It's called Kaonomizo. It's called Kaonomizo. この一番大事なところを守るですね。そういった役割も果たしているということですね。なるほどね。それでは参りましょうか。はい、じゃあホラガイで出発でございます。はい、お願いします。<笑> Through the gate is a steep slope.
最初ここを下ることによって一回死ぬわけです死んでそして修行をしてまた生まれ変わって大きな力を得るそれをデワサンザンでは生きながら体験できるとそうですね山武士ラパスブーティスト・リブーティー。ここはサンズの川って言いますね。川を終わってしまったらもうこの世には帰ってこれない。The Sanzu River separates this life and the next. Crossing it symbolizes death. From here on is the real place of training, the path of rebirth. There are about 580 cedar trees here. Many are over three centuries old. I think the, re the reason it feels so magical is the,、uh, the trees. Is this tree special? It's a sort of rope around it. It looks like a very powerful tree. <laughs> Standing kind of alone. This tree is said to be more than 1,000 years old. It has watched over much of Mount Hagoro's history. The oldest tree, certainly the oldest tree I've ever come near. 1,000 years, it's almost been here. Let's hope it can keep on standing another 1,000 years. Maybe it's still here for a reason. <laughs> this five story pagoda was constructed in the Muromachi period and is a national treasure. It was built using traditional methods, and not a single nail was used. I've traveled around Japan quite a lot, but I've never seen any, any pagoda quite as impressive as this. It's the scenery. I don't think a camera can quite capture what it's like to stand in the presence of something like this, something that's been here. From here, the training involves steadily climbing stone steps to the temple at the mountain's summit. There are 2,446 steps. Shinrin no, eh, the power of the sea, 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 eh, the power of the sea. It takes about one hour to climb the steps.
close to the summit is the Saikan Temple Lodgings. Special food is served here. Beautiful. The food served in these temple lodgings is known as shojin ryori. It is made with mountain vegetables picked on the sacred slopes of Haguro. Eating this food is said to purify the body before worship. The highly nutritious sesame tofu is made with sesame paste. This dish of mountain vegetables topped with tomato is called itadori. <laughs> Climbed an entire mountain for this, so it's very exciting to finally eat something. Wow. This first dish, made from slender bamboo shoots, signifies the three sacred mountains of Dewa. Mmm. If I ate this every day, I think I'd be a better person. <laughs> mm. Next, boiled seasonal akamizu, a kind of mountain vegetable. Mm. Everything just tastes so fresh. It's got quite a salty taste to it. And you can feel your mouth being kind of, your, your palate being cleansed. The ingredients for shojin ryori are gathered in the forests of Mount Haguro. <laughs> For the locals, Akamizu is a familiar mountain vegetable. So, there are plenty to pick. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> あの、ま、来年のためにね、今自分が食べる分お客さんが必要としてる分だけを今取るということですね。That's cool. You have a never-ending garden. Every year it will come back. Fantastic. In the kitchen, it's time to prepare the vegetables. The bitter skin is carefully removed. When they are boiled, they soon turn a rich green. Time and effort is required to eat mountain vegetables. Another secret to enjoying delicious mountain vegetables is in this storeroom. These barrels are full of tsukimono pickles made from mountain vegetables. Usually, there are 10 different kinds. The vegetables are pickled in salt or rice bran and weighted down with a stone as they ferment. It's an ingenious method of using all the bounty of the sacred mountain. For the moment, it's not a good thing. 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 It's not a good thing
冬にかけてですね何も取れなくなった時期にはこのようなものを出して食べますのでもうまあ春にはなくなります大体。はい It's an ingenious way to survive the long winter. And with Shoujin Ryori, you can actually see the food has been taken from nearby, from this mountain. It's kind of fresh, it's locally sourced. And there's that sense of connection between eating and humanity and nature. There's a connection that exists there that I think we've forgotten. The body. Purified by Shojin Ryori. It's time to head for Mount Haguro summit. <laughs> I did it. Yes, stairs complete. Oh. Look at that. At the Sanjin Gosaiden Shrine, the deities of Mount Haguro, Gasan, and Yudono are enshrined. Praying and promising to live his new life to the fullest. Chris's own Tsuraoka journey has come to an end. It is one of Japan's best kept secrets. So, whilst I greedily want to keep it for myself, I do want other people to know that if you come here, you come to Soroka, you taste this kind of fresh local food and immerse yourself in the local area, then you will see it, you will feel it, and most importantly, you will taste what makes this region of Japan so unique and so, so special. I'm also quite jealous because. I live in the city and I wish I lived here. I really do. It's a whole different world away. I mean, look at it. Unbelievable. Check out this website to see 100 delicious and scenic locations in Japan. Chosen by the Savor Japan Project in cooperation with TripAdvisor, the world's largest travel site. This program was made possible by the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries.